Welcome back to the simulator series. In today's episode, we are going to be adding some portals, islands, and areas to our Roblox simulator. As always, if you guys do enjoy the video or it does help you out, make sure you smash the like button, also the subscribe button, and turn this post notifications on if you want to get notified when I upload more Roblox development content. Of course, I have a Patreon. If you guys like to support me and gain access to all the scripts and the game file they made during this video, there's a link down below in the description, and you guys are going to check that out. With that being said, let's get right into it. Now, before we start getting into studio and doing stuff, you guys are going to want to go down below in the description and click the link to this specific Patreon post. Now, you might be thinking, Monster, I'm not going to buy your Patreon. Patreon post. No, this one is all for free. And this post includes a couple of the models that we're going to be using in this series and more specifically in this episode. Now in the future episodes where we actually add more specific models to our game, I will also update this specific Patreon post with those new models as well. So you might see this post again in the future when we do add more models. Anyway, the way that you're able to access this is by of course going down below in the description, finding this link, then where it says attachments, click assets.zip right here. When you click that, it should prompt you to download this. Of course, save it to wherever you want. Now you can go into studio and then also open up the Windows Explorer, find wherever you save that at, and you should see that it is a zip file. Depending on your computer, you should be able to right click on this and then click on extract file. Alternatively, if you don't see that, you should be able to just open up this file like it's a normal folder, and then you should see a couple of different files inside of here. And if you highlight all of them, you should be able to drag them and drop them directly into studio and they should load. As we can see, when I just try to do that, they were not imported into studio. So the alternative way of doing that is go inside of your Explorer, right click anywhere. I'd recommend right clicking on workspace then click on insert from file again go to wherever you actually save those files at and then you have to individually select each of those files so now we just imported the cloud right click the workspace again insert from file now we've imported the egg stand right click workspace again and do that for each and every file now currently these are the only assets included so we should have the egg stand the group chest the mini island the pet index the portal and the cloud of course you guys are free to use your own models but I would kind of recommend just using my models throughout this tutorial until you see what we do with them because there are certain things that about them that need to be there. Like imagine with this portal, for example, this model is kind of set up in a way where we have this little portal, which is this inner green part right here. And we're actually going to be using this specific part to listen for when it's touched to actually teleport a player. Now, when we actually start doing the scripting side of those things, I probably will touch on those again and tell you that this needs to be this specific way for a specific reason inside of a model. But like I said, my best recommendation is just to use these free assets that I'm including once you finish the series or once you get a better grasp at understanding exactly what we need to do with these, then you can go ahead and feel free to add your own models and stuff like that. Anyways, the first thing we're going to do is actually get the portal set up. So we're going to grab this portal model right here, and I'm going to bring it over to our main island right over here. Now, please understand that I am not a modeler. I'm not a builder. I'm not a map maker or anything like that. And most of the tutorials that I make are really only meant to teach you scripting. I don't care about models. I don't care about building or anything else like that. So you'll probably want to set your simulator up a little bit different than mine. But like I said, I would try to follow along with what I do for the most part. And then once you realize why we're doing certain things, that we're actually doing, then of course you can go ahead and branch off on your own. Anyways, with that being said, now that we have the portal moved over to here, what we're gonna do is inside of the workspace, we're actually gonna create a brand new folder and we're gonna rename this to portals. Now that we have that created, we can actually drag this portal model inside of that portals folder and let's just go ahead and rotate this a little bit. So now that looks good. I don't know if they look the exact same on the front and the back, but I like it like this. What I'm then gonna do is I'm gonna actually move this spawn point, like probably just right there. I don't know, it doesn't really matter, but I kind of would like the portals to be along this little path right here. Now I think that's good enough for laying out our first portal what we can then do is rename this model to forest as forest is going to be one of our areas then what we can do is duplicate this by hitting Control d drag it over a little bit then we can rename this to our second area which is going to be called arctic and we can go inside of this model inside of the portal and now instead of the brick color of this portal actually being green we can set it to toothpaste because that's a lighter blue additionally we can duplicate the arctic portal move it over a little bit rename this to volcano and then for the portal we once again want to change the color this time we'll change it to really red okay so now that we have those portals laid out, we're kind of done with that for right now. What we're going to do is we're going to be creating three areas currently, and we might add more in the future. One of the reasons for only starting off with three islands is because I believe it's always best to start small, and then you might realize any mistakes that you've made along the way or changes that you need to make for future islands as well. And if we find any of those, we can easily go back and modify that for three different islands rather than if we did 10 islands at once and we had to modify it for every single island, that would be a lot more work. So now that our portals are laid out, we can actually go ahead and start making our little parkour using using the clouds and the mini islands. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the cloud and the mini island, and we're going to try to drag them over to here so that we can actually see them. Okay, so now that we have them in front of us, what we can then do is we can actually make another folder and we can rename this folder to jumps. And then we can put the cloud and mini island inside of the jumps folder, just like that. So we're going to be using the mini island and the cloud as basically the way for players to parkour up to the next island using their own jumps. Now, of course, there's a couple of things that you want to consider when making your parkour. For example, how many jumps can the player and will the player unlock before they 
will most likely try to advance to the next island. Do we want the player to be able to advance and parkour to the next island with only a single jump and they don't have to purchase any other jumps? Or do we want to force the player to buy at least one jump, otherwise they can't actually parkour all the way to the next island? These are some of the things that you want to consider when building your parkour. Personally, because this is for just demonstration purposes, I'm just going to kind of quickly and sloppily set up the parkour. But like I said, for your own player experiences, this is something that you'd want to consider and probably think out a little bit more so that you're able to lay out all of your jumps with actual reasoning behind them rather than mine is just kind of the fill stuff in and get it going. So what we're going to first do is I'm just going to kind of drag this cloud a little bit over to here. I think where we have this position at is good enough for a player to easily be able to jump off one of these cliffs onto that even with only having like one or maybe two jumps unlocked. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate this, move it a little bit over to here, and then I'll probably rotate it a little bit as well. If you want to, you can freely rotate it so that they don't all look the same. We're going to duplicate it again, move one maybe like over here, and we could even make it a little bit higher if you wanted to. It doesn't exactly matter. Then we'll duplicate it again. We'll move one over to here. Maybe we'll make this one significantly lower than the others. I think that's pretty decent. Now we still have the mini island that we want to incorporate into this. So I don't know, maybe we'll like put it up here, I guess. Also, another thing with all of these models that we're using, the cast shadow property is disabled for literally all of the message inside of here. Otherwise, you're going to have a ton of shadows down below. And in the clicker simulator, they do also disable all the shadows. So that's why we did that in here as well. Anyways, now that we kind of have some of those things set up, what we're going to do is we're going to create another folder inside of here and we're going to rename this to forest. And then we're going to drag all of these inside of that folder. And what we're trying to do with this is organize all the jumps so that if we ever need to come back and modify any of these, we can easily see where all of the jumps are at specifically. Because for instance, if we had all the jumps just inside of the jumps folder, it would be really unorganized. And then if we wanted to modify jumps for just the forest, it would be a little bit harder to figure out exactly what group of jumps those actually are. Anyways, what we're then going to do is we're going to highlight all the clouds. We're going to duplicate them and then we're going to hit control R to rotate them a little bit. And now we can see that they're all in like a little bit of different positionings and stuff like that. What we'll then do is we will raise them all up just like that. And then we'll kind of like position them a little bit differently. I think that actually is pretty good. And of course we could do like the same thing with this island right here. If we wanted to, we can move it over a little bit. We could rotate it and do stuff like that. And of course, if you want to, you can add your own little trees or signs or any other little decorations to the islands as well. But lastly, what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate one more cloud and I'm just going to move it a little bit above this island. So there we go. We have the cloud just right there. Now what we can start doing is adding the actual islands into the game. So what we're going to do is inside of our workspace, we're going to create a brand new folder. We're going to rename this to islands. And then we're going to go inside of jumps and duplicate this mini island that we have right here and drag that into the islands folder. What we can then do is actually create a folder inside of this islands folder and rename that to the first island, which is going to be forest. Then we can drag and drop the mini island inside of the forest folder. We can then bring this island up a little bit. So it should be mostly higher than like all the other parkours. And we also want to resize this because we don't want it to be a mini island. We want it to be an actual island. So we're going to resize it a decent bit, just like that. And then you might want to reposition it. I think this is pretty decent, I guess, but maybe we'll like move this mini island over here a little bit so that it's not directly under it. Okay. So yeah, I think that's pretty good. Then what we could do is we could actually rename this model from mini island to just island. Now on the first island in clicker simulator, what they actually have on the island is a group chest. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring that model over to here and then we can position it correctly on this island. So I'm going to rotate it a little bit. I'm going to bring it down so that it's level with the terrain. And I think that looks pretty good. Maybe we want to bring it down a little bit more. So yeah, now that does look good just like that. Then what we'll do is we'll bring this group chest and put that inside of the forest folder inside of the islands folder right here. And now for the first island, it's not actually a group chest. So I'm just going to rename this to chest just like that. And if you want to, you could delete this text model because it's not a group chest. It really doesn't exactly matter however you want to do it. The other thing that we need to get though is also a portal. So we're going to duplicate the forest portal and we're going to try to bring that up here as well. So now that we have the forest portal up here, we can rotate it a little bit if we want to. So that's kind of facing that way, just like that. And of course, we want to make sure that we actually put this portal inside of the forest folder, inside of the islands folder, just like that. Then inside of the forest folder, we also want to add a part directly inside of here. And we're going to rename this to spawn. And what this part is actually going to be used for is where we want to teleport the player to when they go through a portal traveling to this island. So with this part, we want to make sure that it cannot collide. And we also want to set the transparency to like one. But for right now, just so that we can actually see, we're going to set it to 0.5. We also want to make sure that it's anchored as well. And then we can position this in wherever we want for the player to actually spawn in on this island. So I'm just going to put it like right there. I think that's fine. Now, the first island is pretty basic and all it has is the chest and the portal. So we are done with this island for right now. What we're then going to do is we're going to go back inside of the jumps and select the forest folder right here. We're going to duplicate that entire folder, rename it to Arctic as that's going to be our second island. And then all we're going to do is bring all these jumps up a little bit. Maybe we'll bring it up a little bit even higher. Something like that is probably pretty decent. If you want to, you could also rotate these a little bit. It doesn't really matter. I expect you 
guys will put more effort into building your parkour than I'm doing right now. Anyways, now that we have that all set up, what we're then going to do is duplicate the forest folder inside of islands and once again, rename that to Arctic. Then we're going to drag that up as well and we want it to be above all of our other jumps that lead up to it. So something like that. What we can then do is open up the Arctic folder inside of the island model right here. We have this cliff slash grass part. If we want to, we can change the color so we can change it to like a toothpaste blue to kind of fit the Arctic theme. Another thing that we might want to do is actually expand this island a little bit because this island has a couple more things on it than the first island does. So I think that's pretty decent. Then what we could do is grab our portal that's already inside of here, move this over a little bit. And one thing that we forgot to do is rename the portal. So we're going to rename these both to portal just like that. And now for this portal, we of course can go inside of here, grab the portal and change the color to toothpaste. So it matches the portal down below as well. Then if we need to, we can move the spawn part a little bit. Maybe we want it to spawn back here. Now for the chest, they basically have a mini island behind this island right here. So we're going to duplicate the island model and rename it to mini island, then make it a little bit smaller and just drag it a little bit behind this island right here. Then we're going to put our chest over on this island because that's how they have theirs set up. So there we go. Now on this island, they have three primary things. They have the jump shop on the left, the rebirth shop straight ahead, and an egg that can be hatched on the right. So considering we already have an egg stand model, we can actually use that for the egg right up here. So we're going to drag it over to here and we'll place the egg stand right there for right now. Then we need to make sure that we move the egg stand model inside of the Arctic folder right there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate the spawn part that we have right here and we're going to drag it forward a little bit because we're going to use this to temporarily represent the rebirth shop. So we're going to rename this to rebirth shop hitbox and then we can also expand it out a little bit if we want to just like that. So now we have the rebirth shop hitbox. We also want to duplicate this one more time and this time we actually want to move it to the left a little bit. And instead of saying rebirth shop, this is actually going to be the jump shop hitbox. So we'll make sure that we rename it just like that. And now this island is pretty good as well. We have the chest, we have the rebirth shop, we have the jump shop, and we also have the egg stand as well. Now, there's another thing that we might want to add to this. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to duplicate the rebirth shop hitbox, and we're going to rename this to island hitbox. And what we're actually going to use this part for is to basically track when a player jumps up to this island and to reward them for basically unlocking the island. Now, we want to make sure that this part is not able to cast a shadow. And normally we would set the transparency to one because we don't want to see it at all. But since we're kind of testing stuff out right now and setting it all up, I'm going to leave it at 0.5 so that we can actually see it. Anyways, you can configure this hitbox however you specifically want to. But like I said, the way that this is going to work is whenever this part is actually touched, that is how we're going to kind of grant the player to unlock the island if they're trying to jump up to it. So maybe some people would want this to be expanded down to here. So if the player just touches the bottom of the island, then they unlock the island. Other people might want it so that if they only get up to this specific point on the island, then they actually unlock the island. And of course, you can set it up however you want to. For right now, I'm just going to set it up to basically be the perimeter of the actual island. So we'll just drag it out like that. And then that looks good enough for me. What we're then going to do is we're going to duplicate this island hitbox and we're going to actually paste it inside of the forest folder. And the way that we can easily paste this directly into the folder is by holding control shift and V. And there we go. We've pasted it directly into that folder. Now, of course, we need to move the actual hitbox so that it works with this island. And I'm going to reposition it for this island. We might want to make it even smaller. Some people might want to make it even larger. Like maybe you want it to be if they reach this Y level that they unlock this island sort of a thing. So you can kind of do it however you want to, but I'm just going to make it kind of a small perimeter around the island. And we want to make sure that it touches the top of the island like that. So there we go. Okay, cool. So now that we have the hitbox set up for both those islands, that's great. Now we can go ahead and create our third island. And this is going to be even easier because the third island has all the same stuff that the second island has as well. So all we have to do is change little things around. Anyway, we're going to go inside of the jumps folder, select the Arctic folder and duplicate that. Then we're going to bring all this stuff up. So we'll rotate a little bit like that. Then we can go inside of the islands folder, duplicate the Arctic island and bring this up as well. And we, of course, want to make sure that we bring it higher than all of the other clouds and jumps and stuff like that. Then, of course, we'll rename Arctic to Volcano. And we want to make sure that we do that for both the islands and the jumps right here and make sure that we select the right jumps. So this is the jumps that we actually want to rename right here. There we go. Volcano. And now that we have the Volcano Island, what we can, of course, do is we can go inside of the island part and change the color of the cliff slash grass to red if we want to. So there we go. Then we can go ahead and change the portal color as well. And now the lava island is pretty much all good. The only other thing that we want to actually do is delete the mini island and the chest as well, because this island doesn't actually have either of those. But of course, being an island, this chest does have the eggs. It does have the rebirth shop. It does have the jump shops, the portal, the spawn position, and that's about it. Okay. So with all that being said, we've now laid out a couple of different portals. We've laid out a couple of different jumps for parkouring, and we've also laid out three islands with a couple of different core systems on them as well. In the next episode, we'll most likely begin scripting the portals. And of course, we can start considering other things like unlocking islands, creating the jump shop, creating the rebirth shop, and everything else like that. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, with that being said, that's going to be it for this episode. If you guys did enjoy or you guys want to see some more Roblox 
videos, make sure you smash the like button, also the subscribe button, and turn post notifications on if you want to get notified when I upload more Roblox development content. Of course, I have a Patreon. If you guys like to support me and gain access to all the scripts in the game file that we made during this episode, there's a link down below in the description, and you guys can go and check that out. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next episode.